Hi! Welcome to Physical Education Videos for All. Today, we're going to do physical fitness tests for body composition. Body composition is the body's relative amount of fat to fat-free mass. To do this, we need to calculate our body mass index or BMI. What is BMI? BMI is a measurement of a person's weight with respect to his or her height. To calculate our BMI, we need to get our height and our weight. This is the formula for computing body mass index. Weight in kilograms over height in meter squared. Example computation. Your weight is 56 kilograms and your height is 1.5 meters. Find the square of your height. 1.5 meters multiplied by 1.5 meters equals 2.25. Then, 56 divided by 2.25 equals 24.89. Based on the table, your BMI is normal. And that's all for body composition. Today, we're going to do physical fitness test for flexibility. Flexibility is the ability of a person to do a wide range of motion. We can see this in sports like Taekwondo, gymnastics, and many more. To test flexibility, we need to do two activities, the zipper test and sit and reach. Zipper test. The purpose of zipper test is to test the flexibility of our shoulder gilder. Shoulder gilder includes the bones that connect to the arms, like clavicle and scapula. To do this test, we need a ruler. The person being tested need to stand straight. To test the right shoulder, you need to raise your right arm, bend your elbow, and reach down across your back as far as possible. And then, extend your left arm down and behind your back, bend your elbow up across your back, and try to reach your fingers over those of your right hand as if to pull a zipper or scratch between the shoulder blades. Your partner will observe whether the fingers touch or overlap each other and measure it. If not, measure the gap between the middle fingers of both hands. Record the distance in centimeter. To test the left shoulder, raise your left arm up, bend your elbow, and reach down across your back as far as possible. Extend your right arm down and behind your back. Bend your elbow up across your back and try to reach your fingers over those of your left hand as if to pull a zipper or scratch between the shoulder blades. And again, your partner will observe if the fingers touch or overlap each other and measure it. If not, measure the gap between the middle fingers of both hands. Record the distance in centimeter. This is the scoring for zipper test. Sit and reach. The purpose of sit and reach is to test the flexibility of our lower back and hamstring. To do this, we need a ruler and tape measure. To do sit and reach, first you need to sit on the floor with back, head, and shoulders flat on the wall. Feet are 12 inches apart. Interlock thumbs and position the tip of the fingers on the floor without bending the elbows. After the partner has positioned the zero point of the tape measure or meter stick, you may slide your hand slowly forward without jerking. Try to reach the farthest distance as possible without bending the knees. Then your partner will record the distance. You need to do it twice. Bouncing or jerking movement is not allowed. This is the scoring for sit and reach. 
that's all for flexibility test. See you next time. Today, we're going to do physical fitness test for cardiovascular endurance. Cardiovascular endurance is the ability of our heart and lungs to work for a long period of time. We need this in sports that requires long duration of play, like marathon, cycling, and football. Endurance may also refer to muscular endurance, which is the ability of the muscle to do repeated work without getting fatigued. To test cardiovascular endurance, we need to do two activities, step test and beef test. Step test. The purpose of step test is to measure our endurance to work for three minutes. To do this, we need a stopwatch, a bench, and our resting heart rate. To get the resting heart rate first, you need to locate your pulse. You can do it on your neck or on your wrist. Count the pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by 6 to get 1 minute. For the height of the step, 8 inches for elementary and 12 inches for secondary. To do 3 minute step test, first you need to stand at least one foot away from the step or bench with trunk erect and eyes looking straight ahead. The first step of the sequence should be alternate. At the signal go, step up and down the bench for 3 minutes at the rate of 96 beats per minute. One step consists of 4 beats. Up with the left foot, that's the first count. Up with the right foot, that's the second count. Down with the left foot, that's the third count. Down with the right foot, that's the fourth count. That is for the first sequence. Then, up with the right foot, first count. Up with the left foot, second count. Down with the right foot, third count. And down with the left foot, fourth count. For the second sequence. Observe proper breathing. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Immediately after the exercise, stand and locate your pulse. And at the signal, start to get your heart rate. Don't talk while taking the pulse beat. To get the heart rate, count the pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by 6. For the timekeeper, as the performer assumes the position in front of the step, signal, ready, and go. Start the stopwatch for the 3 minute step test. After the test, allow the performer to locate his or her pulse. Give the signal to count the pulse beat. Let the performer count his or her pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by 6. For the scoring, record the 60 second heart rate after the activity. Today, we're going to do physical fitness test for strength. Strength is the ability of the muscle to generate force against physical objects. We need this in sports like weightlifting, shot foot, discus throw, javelin throw, and many more. To test strength, we need to do two activities, basic plank and push-up. Push-up. The purpose of this test is to measure the strength of upper extremities. To do this, we need a mat.
To do push up, first lie down on the mat, face down in a standard push up position. Palms on the mat about shoulder width, fingers pointing forward, and legs straight, parallel, and slightly apart with the toes supporting the feet. For boys, straighten the arms, keeping the back and knees straight. Then lower the arms until there is a 90 degree angle at the elbows. And for girls, with the knees in contact with the floor, straighten the arms, keeping the back straight. Then lower the arms until there is a 90 degree angle at the elbows. Perform as many repetitions as possible, maintaining a cadence of 20 push-ups per minute. A maximum of 50 push-ups for boys and 25 push-ups for girls. For the facilitator, stand in front of the performer and look closely to the elbows to accurately judge the 90 degrees bend. As the performer assumes the position of push-up, start counting as the performer lowers his or her body until he or she reaches 90 degree angle at the elbow. Make sure that the performer execute push-up in the correct form. The test is terminated when the performer can no longer execute push-ups in the correct form, is in pain, voluntary stops, or cadence is broken. After the test, record the number of push-ups made. This is the scoring for push-up. Basic plan. The purpose of this test is to measure the strength of our core muscle. To do this, we need a mat and stopwatch. To do basic plank, first, Assume a push-up position. Rest body on forearms with palms and fingers flat on the floor. Elbows are aligned with the shoulders. Legs are straight with ankles, knees, and thighs touching together. Support weight on forearms and toes. Make sure that your back is flat. Head, neck, and spine are in a straight line. Keep abdominal muscle engaged and contracted. Do not let stomach drop or allow hips to rise. For the facilitator, ensure the availability of a mat or smooth flooring or anything that can protect the forearms. Give the signal go and start the time. Make sure that the back of the head, neck, spine, and ankles are in a straight line. Give two warnings. Stop the time when the performer can no longer hold the required position or when the performer has held the position for at least 90 seconds. Holding the plank position beyond 90 seconds is considered unnecessary. After the test, record the time in the nearest seconds or minute. Maximum of 90 seconds for boys and girls. This is the scoring for plant. And that's all for strength. See you again next time. Today, we are going to do physical fitness test for speed. Speed is the ability of a person to cover a distance in a short period of time. We need this in sports like running, basketball, and many more. To test speed, we need to do 40 meter run. To do this, we need a running area with a measurement of 40 meters, 
and a stopwatch. To do 40 meter sprint, first you need to have a running area with a measurement of 40 meters. It should also have a starting line and a finish line. At the signal ready, the performer should be at the starting line, assume a crouch position, and both hands should not go beyond the line. At the signal get set, the performer's hip move upward by extending the legs. And at the signal go, run to the finish line as fast as you can. For the facilitator, first check if the stopwatch is at zero point. Then, check if the performer is ready to run. Announce the signal, ready, get set, go. At the signal go, start the time. And stop it as the performer crossed the finish line. After the run, record the time. This is the scoring for speed. And that's all for speed. See you again next time. Today, we're going to do physical fitness test for power. Power is the ability of the muscle to transfer energy and release maximum force at a fast rate. To test power, we need to do standing long jump. Standing long jump. The purpose of this test is to measure the strength and power of our leg muscles. To do this, we need a tape measure. To do standing long jump, first, stand behind the takeoff line with feet parallel to each other. The tips of the shoes should not go beyond the line. Bend knees and swing arms backward once. Then swing arms forward as you jump landing on both feet. Try to jump as far as you can. Do not control the momentum of the jump. Must land on both feet. Perform the test twice in succession. For the partner or facilitator, place zero point of the tape measure at the takeoff line. After the jump, Spot the mark where the back of the heel of either feet of the tester has landed nearest to the takeoff line. Record the distance of the two trials. This is the scoring for standing long jump. And that's all for power. See you again next time. Today, we are going to do physical fitness test for agility. Agility is the ability of a person to move quickly in different direction. We need this in sports like basketball, football, boxing, and many more. To test agility, we need to do two activities, hexagon agility test and shuttle run. Hexagon agility test. The purpose of this test is to measure on how fast you can move in different direction using coordination, speed, and balance. For this activity, we need a hexagon mark on the floor and a stopwatch. The hexagon size. The length of each side is 18 inches for high school and 12 inches for elementary. Each angle is 120 degrees. There are different ways on how you can make an hexagon. I'm going to show you one way on how to do it. First, get a paper and cut it into strips. Each strip has a length of 18 inches for high school and 12 inches for elementary. After you cut the strips, 
lay it down on the floor and make an hexagon shape. Six sides. After you assemble it, put tape on each end of the strip of paper. To do hexagon agility test, first, stand with both feet together inside the hexagon facing the mark starting side. At the signal go, using the ball of the feet with arms bent in front, jump clockwise over the line, then back over the same line inside the hexagon. After that, you rest for one minute. You need to repeat the test again, but now moving counterclockwise. For the timekeeper, start the time at the signal go and stop once the performer reached the side where she started. Record the time of each revolution. Restart the test if the performer jumps on the wrong side or step on the line. This is the scoring for hexagon test. Today, we're going to do physical fitness test for reaction time. Reaction time is the amount of time it takes to respond or react in a stimulus. We need it in most sports. Example, reacting on an offense, reacting on a defense, or reacting in a gun in a starting line of 100 meter sprint. To test reaction time, we need to do stick drop test. To do this, we need a 12 inch ruler, an armchair, or chair and table. To do stick drop test, First, sit on an armchair or chair next to the table so that the elbow and the lower arm rest on the desk comfortably. Place the heel of the hand on the desk so that only the fingers and thumb extend beyond. Fingers and thumb should at least one inch apart. Catch the ruler with the thumb and index finger without lifting the elbow from the desk as the partner drop the stick. Hold the stick while the partner read the measurement. Do this tries. For the partner or facilitator, hold the ruler at the top, allowing it to dangle between the thumb and fingers of the performer. Hold the ruler so that the 12 inch mark is even between the thumb and the index finger. No part of the hand of the performer should touch the ruler. Drop the ruler without warning and let the tester catch it with his or her thumb and index finger. Record the score on the upper part of the thumb. This is the scoring for stick drop test. Record the middle of the three scores. For example, if the scores are 21, 18, and 19, the middle score is 19. In case where the two scores are the same, for example, 18, 18, 25, the repeated score shall be recorded. And that's all for reaction time. See you again next time. Today, we're going to do physical fitness test for coordination. Coordination is the ability of a person to use all senses at the same time while performing. We need this in most sports. To test coordination, we need to do juggling. To do juggling, we need to use SIPA. Equipment SIPA This is a washer weighing 4 grams with 5 inches straw or 20 pieces of bundled rubber bands or any similar local materials weighing 4 grams.
This is the procedure on how to do juggling. The main objective is to hit the sipa, rubber band, or similar local material alternately with the right and left palm upward. The height of the material being tossed should be at least above the head. For the partner or facilitator, count how many times the performer has hit the material with the right and left hand. Stop the test if the material drop on the floor or after 2 minutes. There shall be 3 trials. This is the scoring for juggling. Record the highest number of hits the performer has done. This is the scoring for juggling. And that's all for our coordination. See you again next time. Today, we are going to do physical fitness test for balance. Balance is the ability of a person to maintain body equilibrium while moving or playing. We need this in sports like gymnastics, figure ice skating, and skateboarding. To test balance, we need to do stark balance stand test. Stark balance stand test. The purpose of this test is to measure the ability of a person to maintain body equilibrium. To do this, we need a flat, non-slip surface and a stopwatch. To do a stark balance stand test, first, the performer needs to remove the shoes. Stand straight and place hands on the hips. Position the right foot on the side of the left knee. Raise the left heel to balance on the ball of the foot. Maintain balance as long as possible. Do the same procedure with the opposite foot. For the partner or facilitator, start the time as the heel of the performer is raised off the floor. Stop the time if any of the following occurs. The hand come off the hips. The supporting foot swivel or move in any direction. The non-supporting foot lose contact with the knee. The heel of the supporting foot touches the floor. There shall be three trials. Scoring. Record the time taken on both feet in nearest seconds and divide the score to two to get the average percentage score. And that's all for balance. See you again next time.